So hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the UC Santa Cruz Banana Slug Voices student panel. Uh, we're very happy to have you all join us. I see folks are coming into our Zoom room. I'm going to give it a, a couple seconds here just to let everybody join before we kick it off for this hour long conversation amongst students. And you all who have joined us this evening, so happy to see you all. Very excited to have you join us and hear from our awesome students. Just wanna share, we have such a great lineup for you tonight uh, with all of our different students who are here. You can see as you load into the room, uh, their names and majors and residential colleges. Uh, listed on the slide here, which I think is, is really fantastic. So yeah, we have six fantastic students with us tonight who are here to answer questions, talk about their personal experiences, and really uh, let you know what it's like to be a banana slug at UC Santa Cruz. So we'll give it just a, a couple more seconds here, see if anyone else is going to be joining us this evening. Of course, others may come in a little bit later on as we're going through questions. Um, please, as you join, um, know that you can type your questions into the Q&A chat. We do have other admissions staff here who are monitoring that chat and helping to answer your questions. And we're going to be answering all, a lot of your questions live on air too. So please, please, please don't be shy. Get those questions into the chat. That's why we're here. We really want to connect and answer your questions and, and give you the insights that you're looking for as you think about residential colleges and colleges in general and filling out your UC application. Yeah, well, I think we've, we've got a good audience in here and I want to go ahead and, and get us started and make the most of our time together. Um, good evening. My name is Beatrice Atkinson Myers. I am the Associate Director of Admissions, Outreach and Recruitment here at UC Santa Cruz. I'm also a very proud alum banana slug one thing you will learn about coming to UC Santa Cruz is once you come, you don't want to leave. It's a magical place. It's a really special place. Um, and I actually graduated uh, a while back with a degree in literature from Cal College. And I'm very happy to be able to moderate this conversation tonight. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to our uh, student participants. And I'm just going to go and ask them to go down the line. And we'll start with uh, Sandrine. Sandrine, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sandrine. Sandrine. Um, I'm, I'm from San Diego. Diego. Uh, I'm a sociology, sociology major and I'm affiliated with Oaks, Oaks College. Oops, that's, that's our chance. Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Jameer. Hello, everyone. My name is Jameer Calhoun. I'm a transfer from Los Angeles, California. Um, I am a critical race and ethnic studies sociology uh, dual major. Um, representing Kresge College, currently living in John, John R. Lewis College, our newest name for our newest college. Um, and I'm glad to be here. Oh, oh I don't, don't want to, I, I forgot, forgot. I'm, I'm a, a transfer, transfer student. student. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Sully. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sullivan Goodra. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a film and digital media major. Um, I entered or came to UCSC as a, as a freshman, and I am actually from a small town in the mountains of New Hampshire. It's called Conway. Um, and I am a Merrill College affiliate. All right. Outstanding. Irma. Hello, my name is Eva. Um, my major is Molecular Cell and Developmental Biology. Um, I transferred from Riverside, California, and I'm an Oaks affiliated as well, but I live at Porter. Uh, Carolyn. Hi, my name is Carolyn Mock. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a double major in anthropology and community studies. And I came to UCSC as a freshman and I'm now a junior and I'm affiliated with Porter College, but I live off campus now, but I lived in Porter as a freshman. And Amanda. Hi, my name is Amanda Scott. I am a freshman this year. My major is anthropology and I am affiliated with Stevenson College. And I was also from uh, Long Beach, California. 
Well, welcome everybody. And yeah, I see some questions coming into the Q&A already, which is great. So let's keep that going. Love to see those. I'm going to just start us out with um, a real quick obvious one, which is actually, what is the oak thing going on? Who wants to take that? Because that is something that's very unique. And actually, that was one of our first questions that students had asked in the, the chat, which was, how do you know which college you end up getting affiliated at UC Santa Cruz? So I am going to ask somebody with an Oaks affiliation to explain that and then explain kind of how you chose to be affiliated with that residential college. So I think we'll start with Sandrine. Um, I'm, I'm going to be real. real. I'm, I'm going to keep real this whole time, time we're here. here. Uh, I don't, I don't know, know the history, history of the Oaks chant, to be honest. Um, I, I was aware of it when I did Black Academy. Um, uh, in, in regards, regards to the question, uh, how do you choose um, when, when you're in your enrollment, uh, you get like, like an enrollment in Cal called my UCSC. Um, there is a section in your to-do list where you have to choose your call affiliation. So it's your choice to choose where you want to go to. And for me, I chose Oaks because Obviously, Obviously, I did, I did my, my research. You can go online on the um, college's website and has the descriptions of each college. But I chose Oaks specifically because I knew that's where um, a lot of the social activism work uh, in regards to like what Oaks is about is usually there. All of the uh, dorms on there are actually named after a lot of social activists like Stephen Biko, they have Frida Kahlo. Um, so that's why I chose to be affiliated with Oaks. Um, on, on top, top of that, that uh, as someone who is black, knowing, knowing that, that coming here was going to be a challenge, I want to be affiliated with the college that is well known for being like a black and brown college. So it, I felt, you know, safe and I felt like there was a community there that I could build. All right. So just so we kind of back up a little bit, anyone want to take sort of like what are the residential colleges and sort of how does it play into your student life here at UCSC? Um, I can take that. So there's 10 different colleges um, and I know it's confusing and, and I know everybody like at the beginning of the application it's like what college do I choose? Um, each college has a different kind of like um, mantra to it kind of what they stand for. Um, I know a lot of women in STEM choose Rachel Carson because, you know, women in STEM. Um, like uh, Sandrine said, Oaks is a very uh, BIPOC friendly college. So, um, and then College 9 and 10 is known for their international student housing. Um, and then Merrill and Oaks, Mer Merrill and Stevenson is known for like their, the athletes, like all the athletics. Um, and then there's like really specific types that like you look into. Um, so it just depends on where you feel comfortable. I, I personally don't think that there's like, a, like it'll make or break your time here because the college is, the school is so big that you're always gonna be spending time at different places on campus. So you don't necessarily spend your entire time where you're affiliated. I mean, I'm Oaks affiliated and I think I've only gone down there like two times. In the entire time I've been here, I've only gone there two times. Um, and so it, 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 it just depends on who you live, live with because I've lived at Porter, I lived at College 9 and 10, I lived at the transfer community um, and that's how you make your community. So you make your community if you are a freshman, I believe, you have to take certain classes with your college um, when you first start. I transferred here, but I work at admission, so I kind of know this stuff. Um, you have to take certain classes um, as a freshman with your college, and I think you can build community there, and then as well as where um, you live. So if you decide to live in Merrill, but you're affiliated with Oaks, you know, you, you start to make community with your housemates, with your roommates, with your dorm mates. So I think it just all depends, but you can always switch. So if you come here and you're like, man, I really wanna be affiliated with, with Porter. Like I wanna live at Porter, I wanna graduate with Porter. You can always switch if you come in as like an Oaks affiliate. So that's the neat part about it. Outstanding. And just as a, a reminder for everyone, cause I think that this is a really common question that I know I get within admissions is, 
you know, are the resident, residential colleges connected to your major? And the answer is a resounding no. It's not connected to your major. You can see everybody shaking their heads. Genuinely, it is not connected to your major. It really has to do with what's interesting to you, the architecture. It could be the location of where the colleges are on campus. It could be the theme. It could be, um, yes, who are the other students at that residential college where you feel community and you feel um, you know, connected with. So you have a lot of different choices. It's just a way of taking you know, this larger uh, research institution and then making it into this, this more personal, smaller experience and space um, directly. All right, so we're getting a lot of other great questions in and I'm, I'm seeing some questions come into the, the chat about um, athletics. And I know we have an athlete with us today, which is very exciting. And so Amanda, I wanted you to just sort of talk about, first off, what is your sport? How did you get connected to your sport? Did you have to try out? What was that process like? And then talk, if you can, just a little bit about like, what is it like to be a student athlete at UCSD? Okay, yes. Hi, uh, my name is Amanda once again, and I am actually um, a part of the women's soccer team here. Um, uh, not the club, it's the actual uh, school team. And uh, I first got in touch with the team through like club soccer back at home and through email. So if you're interested to play on the school team, I would encourage you to email the coaches and you can find that online. Just type it up and you'll find it very easily. And then if you don't want to play um, for the school, there's also club soccer, which that is um, you come to campus and then once everyone gets settled in, there'll, there'll be tryouts and you can hear about that through throughout the school and like Instagram pages. Um, but being an athlete on campus is actually really nice and you get to build a community here with um, people and it's easier to make friends and stuff like that. And it's also very helpful with school because a lot of your teammates are taking the same classes as you are, have taken them before. So it's also you get like your own built in tutors and stuff like that. So. It is very easy to be an athlete at UC Santa Cruz, as well as a student. Fantastic. And Amanda, who are some of the other uh, colleges that you all compete against as a Division Three school? So we are Division Three, but we also compete against like NAIA schools and Division Two schools. So we have competed against UC Merced, Dominican, um, Pomona Pitzer, Menlo, uh, and then we also um, um, play against teams like from the East Coast. Our conference here at UC Santa Cruz is actually coast to coast. So we play schools like Christopher Newport and um, yeah, schools like that. So we do travel as well. So if that's something you're interested in as well. So in general, for all of you who are here, what are some of the clubs and organizations that you are involved in here at UCSC? And how did you how did you find them? Like how did you get involved with them specifically? And Carolyn, I'm gonna have you go ahead and start off. Um, so since I came to UCSC as a freshman, um, I got to participate in Cornucopia, uh, which is basically our beginning of the year event where all the clubs and organizations have their own tables set out. It's like a little festival on um, Oprah's Field although this year it was a little smaller and in our athletics facility um, to keep it smaller for COVID protocol purposes. Um, but I got the chance to interact with a lot of different clubs, sign up for their email list, things like that, and try out their different meetings, see what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, and I am a part of the Rotaract Club and what that is, is the college level of Rotary um, service organization. Um, and so we have meetings in which we figure out what organizations we want to volunteer with. Um, we do things like beach cleanups or like things to help the, our specific community. Um, and that actually goes in line with my community studies major um, in which I am going to do a field study uh, quarter for this summer and fall. Um, so I'm really interested in like mutual aid and organizations like that. Um, and then I also am a employee at the Arboretum on campus, which is really cool and a really cool community uh, to get to be a part of, especially because it's not a part of my major. Um, and so I get to be 
involved in different things like regardless of my actual curriculum which is I feel a really cool opportunity um, and the arboretum is a giant botanical garden with a lot of research opportunities for students and for just people who want to come um, either walk around or learn more from the employees and the interns that work there. So. All right. So anyone else, clubs and organizations, and how did you get involved with them? Um, I'll, I'll go, go ahead and go. go. I'm, I'm involved, involved with the BSU, BSU, which is the Black, Black Student Union. Union. Um, and I'm also involved, involved with Emotia. Um, as, as a transfer, transfer student, I was very familiar with Emotia because I did a lot of uh, work, work for Emotia at my community, community college. college. Um, and actually, we didn't have BSU. So knowing that UCSC had a BSU and actually did a lot of work to not reinvent the university, but you know, make an impact. Um, I decided I want to be a part of that. Um, and I heard about it through, uh, once again, Black Academy, which is, of course, not really a course, but it's kind of like a week-long program that um, incoming, usually Black transfers, but also Black um, freshmen and all different people from different walks of life come together. And um, we just talk about the university and different things like that. Standing. I just wanted to, oh, Jameer, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to jump in there and... Um, and say that uh, a good way to get involved and to find out about a lot of things is just to pay attention after you have accepted, you know, um, have you, after you have accepted admission into uh, into Santa Cruz, there'll be a lot of information coming at you, um, a lot of different things. I was also in Black Academy, and um, that was something that I took part in before, like in the summer before um, my, uh, my first, um, you know, my first session, my first um, quarter. Um, so finding out those type of things that that align with your own personal interests, there's, there's going to be a lot of information coming at you. Um, the website, like, I love the website because it's telling me um, about something new every week, every week, every day. Um, and then, you know, once I um, once I declared a major, a lot of the major stuff comes through um, my emails as well. So um, Santa Cruz does a real good job of really letting you know, hey, you can be a part of this, you can be a part of that research opportunities. Um, so just kind of paying attention to the email, um, looking at the website, and a lot of stuff that comes at you um, is one big step towards doing that. Outstanding. So clubs and organizations. Yeah, um, I had a similar experience to Carolyn uh, my freshman year, just kind of, I went to the the Cornucopia event, um, and it was just like hundreds of different clubs, um, just this amazing experience, signed up to a bunch of them. I think at this point, I'm only a part of a few, um, I'm a part of the, the mountain biking club that's on campus, um, I'm a part of the Shutter Slug photography group, um, and last year I was a part of the, the filmmaking crew um, on campus, just because I'm a film major. So it makes a lot of sense for me to do clubs that uh, put a camera in my hands. Um, but now I'm working on a few with a few different departments on campus doing like marketing and, and advertising with, with photo and video. And that's been uh, where I dedicate a lot of my time. Um, and those jobs, I just kind of there, there are ways to find jobs on campus. There's like this portal, there's this website um, that every department and every everyone on campus that needs a student uh, staff position filled, fills out like a, a job description. You can apply as a student, super easy. Um, and that's, yeah, that's how I got these jobs. Um, and they've, they've been great. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I've found that there's really no shortage of things to do um, and clubs to join on campus. Um, and there's everything. There seems to be a club for literally anything, so. Um. And I want to ask, Irma, as a, a transfer student, when you first came in to UC Santa Cruz, um, because you mentioned that's a different process, talk about how did you start to find community? How did, I mean, if you're involved in clubs and organizations, how did you start to get connected to, you know, other transfer students, advisors, academics? What was that process like for, like for you? Um, I was actually extremely lucky. Um, the undocu student service here on campus. So I am undocumented. So I'm part of like all the groups 
of the Andaki service. Um, they held a week long extended orientation. So we came maybe a, in July, um, a month, like for a week on campus. Um, and every single day was a new activity where they taught us where everything was. They showed us all the different resources on campus. They, um, we had a talk with the main guy that's from financial aid. Um, so every day they had all these resources like compiled and like given to us. So by the time, so I grew community there because those were people that I knew identified like me. So when I actually transferred here, I was able to like reconnect with them and I knew where I could go for help. I knew where STARS was. I knew, you know, where EOP was located um, and I knew the different programs they held. So I was able to build community in that way. Um, and then once you find one connection, like that connection builds you another connection and then that connection builds you another one, which is really nice about UC Santa Cruz. It's not a competitive place where I've heard other UCs, um, it's like cutthroat, like dog eat dog world, where here it's like, you hear somebody like, hey man, I'm, I'm really looking for something. And they're like, oh, like I can help you with that. Like, I know exactly where that's at. And they'll like help you get there. You know, it's not like we're all trying to reach the same place. And that's what's nice about here. So that's how I built community. Um, the USS, the Undocu Student Services, um, EOP and um, STARS. And just to, to follow up a little bit, you know, we, we love acronyms. I will, I will tell everybody, I apologize. We kind of live in this world where everybody just says these letters and then knows what these letters mean, but not everybody does. So will you uh, explain EOP and STARS for a second? Um, I don't know exactly what EOP stands for. STARS is... Um, Educational Opportunity Program, just FYI. Yeah, Educational <laughs> Opportunity Programs. <laughs> Um, and then STARS is uh, students re-entering, it's first transfer students, <laughs> students transferring and re-entering. Um, so that's what STARS is. So STARS is specifically like built for transfer students and re-entry students, um, as well as they just built a new um, little like thing um, for um students who have gone to like jail or prison. Um, I think it's called underground scholars. So they just built that with that. So they help with resources because, you know, incoming transfers and incoming freshmen, completely different experiences on resources, on what you're here to look for. Like as a transfer student, like you're here to do your work. Like you have two years, three years at the most to like get it done. Um, you already know what research you're looking for. You already know what grad programs you're looking at. You already know what you're doing after graduation. So STARS kind of helps you guide you through that. So that's what STARS is. Um, EOP is the Educational Opportunity Program. Um, they help more, they've helped me. Um, they have like a wellness program where you can apply for um, a wellness grant. I got a, an electric bike through them, um, which is really nice on campus here because it's very hilly. Um, so, and then they have a bunch of different opportunities where you can like go on hikes or go, I went kayaking with them and like we drove out to um, Monterey Bay and we kayaked um, for a whole day. And they also assist you with like budgeting, with time management, with a bunch of um, little details that, you know, you can't really get the answer with just Googling. If you go to EOP, they have like different mentors that can assist you through that. And then each mentor is like specialized in a different major. So like they have STEM majors and then they have like, you know, social science majors and political majors and LSS majors. So, you know, you have like a group of people that you can go and ask for help. Outstanding. So, I mean, it, you just mentioned the, the, the big difference between coming in as a first year student versus as a transfer student. And, and you, you know, we, we talked a lot about what services we have for transfer students. So. You know, um, Amanda, I'd love to hear from you about, you know, you came in as a first year student. How did you go about starting to find help when you had those types of questions and you needed help with, maybe it was time management, maybe it was how to sign up for classes, maybe it was like a financial aid question. Like, where did you go? How did you start to find that? 
for me, a lot of the help that I got was through the um, enrollment process. Um, during the summer, you have to take a, like a summer class um, that's mandatory and you um, they literally give you guides and videos and uh, Zoom appointments and so much opportunity for help throughout these mandatory assi assignments that you have to do, but it's really not assignments, it's just really help to tell you what you need to do and how you need to get there. So that's what really helped me. So if you do do plan on coming here and go through the summer program, you have to really pay attention and like take your notes and um, really you have to you have to read the paperwork basically. Don't just skip through, don't just skip through the videos. Um, so that's what really helped me, but also just going online at, at UCSC and looking at um, the emails. So I always um, email my major advisor or my college advisor, they, they have answers. And even if they don't have the specific answer you're looking for, they will direct you to wherever you need to go. So just honestly, don't be afraid to ask questions. It might be scary, but someone will help you no matter what. Can I add to that? Absolutely. Yeah, I had a, a really phenomenal experience with my um, college advisor. Um, she, I, I reached out to her like freshman year, like first week, kind of just like establish that relationship. And like every few weeks I'd meet with her, ask her different questions about academics or whatever. And she was always there to talk like literally like any time of day, she'd answer my emails. I even went on a, a small leave of absence last year during COVID. And she, I met with her like three or four times while I was on my leave of absence. And she was more than happy to talk to me and help me with problems, even though I wasn't necessarily still a student at UCSC. And that, that would just like blew my mind. Uh, but it's just a phenomenal resource and they always have answers. And if they don't, they're more than happy to direct you in the right way and make those connections and start an email chain with someone that does now. Um, so yeah, college advisors are definitely your friend. If I could so, also add on to that really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just because I had um, quite a few experiences with um, advisors from different departments because I went through a lot of different majors and minors um, before I decided on the double major that I have now. Um, not like switching to clearing them, just like went, just went through their pages, went through all their curriculum and like mapped it out of what that might look like and if I could finish on time. Um, and met with all of the advisors and all of them were extremely helpful. Um, and I, I just like that they, they took the approach of like asking me what I really wanted out of the major or the minor um, and not just saying like, okay, well, you'd have to take these classes and you'd have to be able to finish this at this time, like really working with me to figure out if it was the right fit. Um, and to just see that across the board always makes me feel really secure um, in the school and that it's like obviously a value of the institution as a whole and not just a lucky one department or the other. So that actually sets us up for a perfect transition. Several of our, our audience members have been asking specifically about major. So, uh, and, and the questions that we're getting are, you know, things like, how do you double major? What are the advisors like? Um, when did you have to declare your major? How did you pick your major? And these are all really fantastic questions. And I just wanna say before I have our, our panel answer, everybody's process is a little bit different and, um, and everything can be, you know, it can be, um, you know, kind of different depending on the major and things like that in terms of, of how the advising and what the requirements are. So just keep that in mind. And, and I think everybody's referenced our, our website, you know, either the admissions website or the department websites as really helpful resources. So definitely make sure you're going to those two. So I just wanna put that out there before we even jump into it. But with that, Jameer, talk to me about your major. How did you come to your major? How did you decide? What were the advisors like? Or what are they like? <laughs> So um, originally I transferred from Los Angeles City College as an African-American studies and psychology major. Um, and um, those are the, those are the, well, two of the three fields that I got my AA degrees in. And I, you know, I applied to a bunch of different schools um, and I applied to Santa Cruz as um, a critical race and ethnic studies major um, and a psychology major. 
Um, some of the, I could say some of the things that I needed for psychology was not fulfilled um, yet when I got, when I came in. Um, but Cress opened the doors to me. I was talking to the psychology department. Um, they wanted me to take a, a couple of, a couple of more classes, perhaps take some at, at a local community college. You know, um, I thought about it a little bit, my thought process. I said, you know what, let me just take a look at some of the other like programs um, that are offered here in sociology. Um, I had fulfilled like a lot of the prerequisites for sociology throughout my uh, coursework. And um, when I reached out to the department, they, they were just so warm and endearing and it was like a match made in heaven to me. Um, so, you know, I'll say, well, um, that's where I am, uh, critical race and ethnic studies and sociology major. Um, and I just, I looked when I was, when I was applying, I was looking at what schools offer what, what do they call their departments? Because, you know, some schools, you know, have different names for their departments, especially when you go into like ethnic studies, it may be more centralized or, or maybe just a little different. But um, besides that, that's, you know, that was my process initially. And still to this day, my advisors regularly check on me. Um, and when you start talking about your majors and your advisors, and what I was talking about earlier about opportunities, I have received so many opportunities through my advisors, research opportunities. Um, you know, if in case I wanted, to, in case I needed two units, they have like two unit classes where they're talking about an, an awesome specific item. It may not go towards, um, you know, your your major coursework, but it could, it could, you know, if you're a freshman or, or something like that, and you have some rooms in your GEs, it could really fulfill those places. So um, they're an awesome source of information, an awesome source of being connected to the campus. Um, the advisors, they're, they're always there to help you, whether it's your college advisors, your major advisors, they're, they're always there for you. Um, and sometimes some things can be handled through email, so you don't have to have a meeting all the time. And I think that's one of the biggest things, especially with our whole COVID world. You know, we've kind of come out of that a little bit to a certain degree. But, you know, when I got here, we were full on. Um, so, you know, it was hard to just meet with all the students that I know they needed to meet. So a lot of information that I got was through emails and the way that you know the other ways that we stayed in contact with each other so i, I think i think they're, they're they're like your biggest friend um that's that's what i that's the best thing i can say as far as far as for me they have been my biggest friends my biggest confidants my biggest helps on this campus outstanding we like to hear that so we're, we have some questions that have asked actually Irma specifically to you about your background because you're doing um, you know STEM major you're in the, the biological sciences and you've been a transfer student and you know students are really interested in knowing what is the advising like um, and also what types of undergraduate research opportunities if you haven't taken advantage of any or if you have um, kind of what is that that picture been like for you. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I don't have the same experience with major advisors um, <laughs> as other people. Um, MCD bio is very impacted and we did lose a lot of advisors um, this past year. So they're very understaffed. Um, so kind of getting an appointment with them on, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, it's very difficult at the moment. Um, they do have a lot of drop-in um, advisor hours where you can drop in and they can assist you on like your um, graduation plan and what classes you need and stuff like that. Um, and as for me as an undocumented student, um, there's a lot of uh, opportunities, even as an undocumented student. Um, there's a program called, um, I, think, I think it's the Student Diversity, and it's, it's like dedicated for undergraduate uh, research, the Student Diversity under Research, um, and you can apply for it um, every year and they help you get into a lab um, and then they help you guide you through the steps of applying and like how to reach out to professors and that like you know what you need to do in order for them to like for you to like kind of like be on top of the list of people um, coming through. Um, I've never been into a research lab just because as much as I love science I hate reading scientific papers 
Um, I'm more of a hands-on kind of person and um, my route is pre-med. So I'm more like volunteering at hospitals, getting my phlebotomy license, getting my medical assistant certificate, you know, like more of a hands-on thing where other students are more research-based. They want like their PhD and they want to like read scientific, scientific papers all day, but there's definitely so many opportunities. There's so many labs. We have like the Genomic Institute here, like we're very well known for our science. So um, I could talk about it all day if you guys want, um, but yeah, so there's definitely a lot of opportunities, but the Student Diversity Research Program is definitely something to look forward to um, if you're trying to get into that. Carolyn, you were talking about your uh, community studies major and needing to do a field study. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what that field study is and, and how you got advising and kind of got involved in that? Yeah, so um, I can't tell you exactly what my field study project is yet because we are deciding that this winter um, in a course, so I can't give you that specific a detail. Um, but basically, I had found out about the community studies major just by looking through uh, the website and stuff and um, met with an advisor and the way she described it just sounded like exactly the hands-on type of thing that I wanted to do and it has three different kind of concentrations that you can look at so you can look at racial justice um, health equity and educational uh, equity and you get to take different classes, like mostly the upper division classes are, are where you concentrate on one field or the other. Um, and then by your, by the summer between your junior and senior years, so that'll be this summer for me, you do a six month field studies program. So summer and uh, fall quarter um, in which you volunteer or intern with a specific organization. And that's most often a mutual aid project, um, just because we're trying to steer away from a nonprofit industry that kind of still runs itself as a business pretty often, um, and more towards having members of the actual communities um, where we're going be in charge and uh, have a little bit more control and leadership. Um, and I am looking at an organization in San Francisco, but you can look at any organization, local or um, in the same state or in the US, and even sometimes international if you have a specific um, kind of reason for going to a specific place internationally, like you know the language or you have an affinity with the culture. Um, and that is the biggest portion of the actual major. So it's, that's your 15 units for both quarters. You don't take any other classes except for special exceptions, but that would be to each their own. Um, and otherwise, the, the major is having a couple introductory, uh, introductory courses um, and courses where you're preparing for that field research, and then your senior capstone would be developing a paper and kind of uh, analyzing your experience in the field. Um, and so for that reason, I'm able to do a double major pretty easily with it because it actually requires so few courses outside of the field work um, that it works really well with my anthropology. And um, the upper division courses that you take in community studies are called topical courses and you can, so you can choose from the upper division courses within the community studies major, or you can choose an affiliated professor's course. So I'm, I've taken my topical courses, um, mostly in history of art and visual culture with um, a fantastic professor, TJ Demos, if you ever have the opportunity to take a class with him, you should. Um, and that has been so cool because I get to explore other departments, make connections, and getting that interdisciplinary work, I think is the best like, form of education. Um, so I felt really lucky to get to explore anthropology and Havoc and, and uh, community studies. Outstanding, all right. Well, I think that that has given us a kind of a really good idea about, you know, 
how you can explore your interests within a major, which is extremely cool. And I just noticed Sandrine has been like giving us a tour of campus without even knowing that she's giving us a tour of campus. She's like moving around and going places. And I'm like, oh, I love this. This is great. Sandrine, you actually have set us up for the perfect next question, which is what's the average class size and how long are classes? And would you do us a favor and show off that classroom for a second since you are sitting in a classroom? Yeah, yeah, as everyone has noticed, noticed I've, been I've been going, going on and off, off camera because I'm actually, actually at, school at school right, right now. now. Not, Not a coincidence. coincidence. Um, um, yeah, yeah, so, so class, class sizes, like, like I'm, I'm in a classroom. classroom. Hold on, let me go to this. Like, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't, I don't know, know if everyone, everyone can see all that. that. You know, it's, it's a pretty, pretty, it's a pretty big classroom. Got the front. Right there. Um, I'll, I'll sit that here. here. I'm, I'm actually, actually at Cowell Stevenson, Stevenson particularly Stevenson, Stevenson right now. Um, um, in the, the 150 building. Um, so yeah, yeah classes, classes are, they're, they're, they're pretty big. big. It's, it's not, not going to be your usual, usual like, like if you're a high school, it's not going to be like, like 20 students or if you're community college, college like 40. It's, it's going to be like, like 50, 60, um, depending on like where your class is. I'm sure this class can give it like a good like 80 students. So they're pretty big and they're lecture, they're lecture kind of classrooms. So it's, 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 it's not, not very intimate, intimate you know, know but, but um, yeah, yeah, so they're, so they're pretty, pretty big lecture classes. Classes, classes usually, usually, usually they're about, about an hour. hour. Um, um, I, know I know from my experience, classes uh, are usually an hour. hour. Like, like I have, I have one, one class that's from 520 to 655, so, so almost seven o'clock, so about, about an hour and a half, almost two hours. Um, so, so they're, they're going to be, be very long. long. They're, they're not, not going to be a cute one hour moment. moment. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not happening. happening. <laughs> but, but it also depends on the class. class. Sometimes, Sometimes class ends early and, you know, you know 20, 20 minutes early, early it's like, like, okay, leave or, you know, you're going to be there until maybe 7.15. So, so it, it really depends, depends on, on the flow, flow of the day. Andy, thank you so much. Amanda, what are your classes like? How long are they? When, when do you go to class? What's your schedule like? So this first quarter, I only have one in-person class and that is my Stevenson core class. And then um, I specifically picked Stevenson because the theme here is like self and society. So I picked a class or so I take classes based on that. Um, Steve, every freshman has to take colleges for their um, um, affiliation. And so Stevenson is actually the only one that actually is required to take two core classes. So I have to take one this quarter and then next quarter. Um, but that's um, actually a smaller kind of class. Um, I'm pretty sure there's only about like 25 of us, but it's um, more of like a discussion base. Um, so everyone's involved, everyone's talking, it's very open and it's very fun. My other classes are online and they are only GEs, but they tend to be bigger because they are online. So it's open to more people. But um, that's also going to be changing this next quarter because um, we're getting used to coming back from COVID. So all my classes will be in person. Thanks very much. And when you have those bigger classes, Sully, what's it like? Can you still talk to your faculty? Is it just anonymous? How do you get help when you have those bigger classes? Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, some of my, my early classes before COVID and even during COVID uh, were, I think, like, in like the 100s, my film classes, like 120, 130. And that's like a big number that kind of set me off a little bit. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I really want to take these classes. Like, it seems like kind of a lot. Uh, but you have discussion um, sections every week. And that's a small, close knit group of like 20 students where you really get to interact and talk with um, your, your classmates, which is great. I've met so many friends and made so many connections just through those little discussions. Um, and then for just meeting with my professors and TAs, I've not once had an issue where like they can't make the time um, to, to meet with me, professors or TAs of these large classes. Um, sometimes office hours, like they don't work with my busy schedule and I can email my TA and he will meet with me like a TA for one of my film classes. He, they've met with me at like 1030 PM. Like they're so accommodating and so willing and happy to work with you. Um, it has never once been an issue with these larger classes that I can't get the help and um, that I need from, from the professors, which is amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And actually, Sully, um, a lot of people are interested in film and just what the film program is like. So can you talk a little bit more about film and, and what the program's like 
Is it all film theory? Do you get to do any production? How do you get involved in production if you're interested in it? Tell us a little bit more about that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, so the first two years um, are going to be your your under division classes, or at least once you get through the first three kind of like um, intro classes, and those kind of go over the three main like production, um, TV, and then more like media theory. Um, and then once you get through those, you can go through more analytical classes about um, films of uh, the the 1900s, international cinema. Um, and then once you get into your third year is when you really can start um, working on production classes. So I'm in a production class right now. Uh, those are open to third and fourth years um, and even fifth years. Um, and they are application-based. Um, so you have to apply into these classes, um, but they're not hard applications at all. Uh, and they're, they're amazing. Um, I've had such an amazing experience being in my production class. Um, I'm able to create films um, and work with other classmates who are interested in the same things that I am. Um, but I'd say that there's a, there's a healthy balance of theory and analytical classes about films um, and then also the production side. Uh, and what yeah. about getting involved in production outside of the classroom? Like you talked a little bit about some of the jobs you're doing and some of those activities. So what's, what's that like? Totally. Um, there's no shortage. Um, that's for sure. You can, um, there's the one, uh, film production club or organization on campus called, uh, FPC, another acronym. Um, and they are creating films. It's a student run organization and they are creating films every week. It seems like, um, I think there's over like a hundred students in that organization. They have their own equipment, uh, their own black magic, Canon, Panasonic cameras. They've got it all lighting. Um, and they teach you, uh, every, they teach beginners through intermediate, uh, filmmakers. Uh, so that's a great opportunity. You can also, um, get jobs like I have, um, just reach out to different departments on campus. Everybody seems to, to need, uh, someone who knows how to create videos for, for advertising or stuff like this for, for live streams. Um, so there are opportunities everywhere. You just need to kind of, um, ask. Yeah. Jameer, what are your class sizes like in Crest? It's a very different experience from some of these other majors. Yeah, <clears throat> well, it's, it's kind of like half and half. I do have like, um, I have a history class that's maybe about 30 people in there. Then I have um, a sociology slash legal studies class that's in a full blown lecture hall. So if anyone out there, you know, in the, in like, um, psychology classes are used to taking classes in like 150 people lecture hall they do have those as well um so um like that's like and then i have a class that's like medium size that's like you know 80 people or so not even 80 people but maybe about 60 people or so so it, it um it really differs it really differs and but one thing that is the same is my experience with if i can't reach my professor we have some awesome grad TAs here. I mean, I can't say enough about them. Go over and aboard, over and above for, you know, for the students. Um, I, I, there's one, uh, Mario, I talk to almost every single day. Um, he checks in with me and we talk about things. We, one day we stayed after class for an hour talking, didn't even realize it was an hour. Um, so that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing. So my class experience has been absolutely wonderful. Like it, it, honestly, the Zoom thing was getting to me because I was going to like my second full year of like classes on Zoom. So, you know, Zoom burnout is real. Um, so, you know, I have like one class that is on Zoom, so that isn't too bad, but um, it's, it's been a pleasure to actually interact with students, the TAs and the professors this year. Can I add one little thing about yeah. TAs? Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually just had uh, one of my TAs from freshman year, who I, I think I took two separate classes with her, um, but she just emailed me out of the blue like two days ago and was like, hey, how are you doing? Like, what's what's life like? Um, and it was just, it was a really like insane thing. Like this person that has no real connection with me anymore, like she's not my TA, she has no obligation to do this, but like she genuinely cares about how my school is going and life. Um, and I 
I get that uh, that vibe from all of my TAs. Um, I think it's just yeah, a really incredible thing about, about UC Santa Cruz is how much the TAs care about the students that they're they're helping. Carolyn, do you want to add to that? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say um, the at least in my experience, the TAs made my Zoom classes during the pandemic like worth it. Like they they ran their sections with like incredible engagement um which is just so hard to do over over zoom like they just completely blew me away um with how personal they were and how much they understood how like what we were going through was difficult and so we couldn't necessarily operate with class in the same way and yet having that kind of sense of normalcy um, of like getting to engage with each other, even though it was online, also helped the energy go up. So it was like, it was this delicate balance that I thought they did so well. Um, and when I've had sections in person, like my freshman year, um, the TAs were just incredibly, like they were, they were so helpful. I feel like they gave us so much hands-on experience, um, communicated with the between us and the professors, like helped you get in touch if you needed it, accommodating, like they, they just really, I felt like made my experience like top notch. Andreen, you've raised your hand, please share. Yes, um, we're praising the TAs, so I wanna praise some more. Um, yeah, the, the TAs are a really good lifeline, honestly, because I know like the first day um, I came here, the number one thing that, you know, professors and mentors and everything were harping on is office hours, office hours, office hours. If anything you take away from this, please go to office hours with your professors or your TAs. Um, and if you are intimidated with a professor, because especially for I'm usually transfer students, at least for me, like we didn't have office hours at community college. So I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know, like the professor's like this big high authority person. Go to the TA because most of the time, at least in for me, they're the people who are grading your papers. They're the people who are giving you feedback on the papers and things like that. So talking to them and letting them know who you are on top of going to the professor's office hours is it's please do it. <laughs> So I, I think that's outstanding advice. I think it does lead me to the question though of are your classes taught by faculty? How many of your classes are taught by faculty versus TAs? And, and those are real questions that students have. So I'd love to hear from, from all of you about you know, your interactions with faculty uh, specifically and if you have any faculty that you've really gotten to, to know really well and have gotten to work with. Um. Yeah, the question about our classes taught by TAs, professors, um, from my experience, it's my first year here as a transfer, so I'm not as in depth as some people here as freshmen, but at least for me, um, the classes are taught by professors, but there are things called uh, sections or discussions where um, it is taught by the TAs, the teaching assistants. Um, I know for one of my classes, which is um, GISIS, um, oof, that's a hard acronym to, <laughs> I keep forgetting what it stands for. Basically, it, it, it surrounds like, you know, things about social change and using technology to change our social interactions. Um, and yeah, we have a professor for that class, Chris Brenner, who is amazing. I will say that. Um, he's a great professor who just, um, yeah, he just inspires us to do better for the world and really think about our daily actions in regards to that. But there are also, um, mentors in that class who are somewhat uh, TA uh, adjacent who, you know, also help us with our coursework and they are actually the ones that grade our work. So um, it's for me, from my experience, it's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of professor and TA. So far it's been TA most like uh, most of the time that I've been interacted with, but it's a mixture of both for me. And Carolyn. Uh, yeah, so also been a mix um, of both, but I just wanted to say some particular professors that I have had, um, I can just tell how much they obviously care about the work that they're doing um, and how when they bring that to the class, like when they bring that to usually the lectures that they're teaching, because 
um, the TAs do teach the, the specific sections when you have like 15 ish people. Um, and so that just like automatically feels more personal because they're they're directly engaging with you in discussion. But um, when you have a professor uh, teaching a lecture, I feel like you get personal with them by kind of uh, putting back in the effort that they put in. Um, because you know they're teaching about their research, they're teaching about things that are their their whole passion, um, but they don't necessarily during the lecture have always the opportunity to hear from everyone in the classroom. And so if you're going back to them with interest in the subject, even if it's not your major, like I've had some fantastic professors in things that were not even close to my major, like just uh, like intro classes that I took freshman year. Um, and just by like introducing myself after class and um, talking to them a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, I felt like I got even more out of the class. Um, and even then they're putting so much effort into making the classes interesting and engaging just across all the fields that I've gotten to um, sit in on. So I want to quickly, we're, we're coming up on time here pretty fast, but I have seen some questions about specifically about housing and living on campus. And I want to make sure to get to those. I don't want anyone to think we're ignoring anything. And so Amanda, you are sitting in a dorm room I see you sitting in a dorm room. Talk to me about living on campus. Talk to me about how you got that housing and, and what is it like to live on campus? So um, uh, obviously you heard that uh, you can pick your college that you choose to be affiliated with. And then, so it's kind of um, like UCSD, I saw in the question, someone mentioned that how you um, pick like um, favorite and like least favorite and um, you get to, pick your favorite obviously on there but sometimes you are more unlucky and you don't get your first choice but you'll still get like your second or third um I was lucky I got Stevenson but Stevenson and Cowell are the more older dorms and stuff so um just be mindful of that and but the sizes are pretty much all the same so I am in a triple right now um and I <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not too big <laughs> but it's livable um it is also very easy to get around campus. Um, everyone goes everywhere. You can go to all the different dining halls. It's not hard to make new friends in other places because everyone, it's just a quick little 10 minute walk. It might seem like a lot, but it really isn't. Uh, and uh, the food is great. I saw that the dining hall food is dining hall food, but it's worth it. <laughs> you should definitely eat. It's great, you know, supply yourself with nutrients and um, uh sorry um <laughs> the grocery stores aren't on campus you don't have like stores you can like like a convenience store but the bus system here is great it's free you just use your id card you hop on the bus and there's so many options right off campus like cvs and all that stuff so it's super easy to get what you need um i just also i also want to touch on for any um black students who are here we do have a black student housing at stevenson um, it's called Our Path, which is the Rosa Parks African American Theme House. Um, so that is also another way where you can create community um, because it does feel isolating a little bit because uh, we are a very small population. So um, that is also another uh, choice for housing if you choose to uh, want to associate with Our Path. Outstanding. Thanks for sharing that. Irma, I think you mentioned earlier the transfer committee in particular. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about like, what is the transfer community? Did you live there? Anything else you wanna share? Um, yeah, so there's a specific housing uh, that's not, a, it's not affiliated with any of the colleges. It's called Redwood Grove. Um, it's specific for students who are 23 and older um, and are transferring from a community college to uh, UCSC. And it's like right in the middle of the entire campus. Um, and it was so nice to have a community of people that were older than you, like not older than you, but like your age. Um, you know, I I always get the, oh, like you're 21, you're 23. And I'm like, mm, I'm actually gonna be 29 soon. So it's like, um, it's nice to have, you know, like, I don't wanna say like the mentality because that sounds like kind of mean for younger people, but like, 
you know, when you're like a transfer student and you're here to like, you know, I'm here to do my work. I'm here to trans, like to lead, like graduate, go to my PhD, go to my master's, go to my, my med school, you know, like you're kind of in that same focus where um, now that I'm living at Porter, it's more like a let's party. Let's like, you know, it's let's go outside and yell Porter. And like, it's more of a enjoying the college years where I'm just like, I don't have time. <laughs> I, I'm graduating, you know, like um, that panic starts to come through. Um, so I just watch them through my window, enjoy their their life. Cause you know, I at some point I was there. <laughs> um, so yeah, the transfer community is really nice. And I know that within um, Porter, there's a dorm, there's a dorm section also like specific for transfer students. So then you also get that community through the dorms as well, um, if you're not that 23 and older. So there's a lot of community here. And like I said, STARS is also like, they have a free pantry where like, if you don't have a car, or if you're kind of scared to go on the bus, there's so many food pantries on campus. Like this campus has so many resources for everything. So if you like, if you want lettuce or like, they even have eggs, chicken, they have canned food, bread, um, they have all the veggies you could think of. And all these vegetables are fresh from our farm. Like they're grown on UCSC campus. So there's so many resources and these resources are all over campus. And all you have to do is like, this is the kind of campus you can walk to any door and just be like, hey, I'm kind of looking for this and they'll help you. Like, they're not gonna make you feel like, well, I don't, you're, you're in the wrong department. You know, they're gonna be like, oh, like, you know, like actually you're, you're gonna wanna go here and they're gonna be able to like assist you and then guide you to how to do that. So that's what I love about UCSC. <laughs> Well, that actually transitioned us perfectly. We're sort of at the end of our time, but before I let everybody go, I want everybody to go around and give me um, two things. One, why did you choose UCSC? And then two, what is your advice to prospective students, be they a first year student or a prospective transfer student? And I'm actually gonna go ahead and start with Sully. Why did you choose UCSC and what is your advice? Yeah, um, I choose, chose UCSC for a few reasons. Uh, one of them being it was on the West Coast and I'm from the East Coast. And I was like, ah, I'm a film major. I want to go West. Um, it's also has a great film program. I think we were just nationally ranked number seven for film programs in the United States, which is great. Um, and then lastly, it was the community. I was coming from a small town um, and I wanted to go to a big school, but kind of going to this large school was kind of intimidating. So having the college system, having this close knit community I could call home was really important to me. Um, and it made me feel, or I was hoping it was gonna make me feel less homesick and more at home. Uh, and it did, it really did. Uh, so that's really why I chose to come to UCSC. Awesome, and then any advice for folks? Any advice? Um, oh, I don't know, I think, yeah, there are always going to be opportunities. Um, and yeah, there are always going to be opportunities on campus. Um, and just to any college you go to, um, it just takes a little bit of looking. Um, and sometimes they're just pushed right in your face. Um, and that's really true at UCSC. Um, there's everything here. Um, and so if you don't necessarily see it, if you can't find it on um, on a website or, or something, um, just ask, just ask, make the opportunity. Um, yeah, I don't know. Beautiful. That's what I got at the moment. Awesome. That works for me. Jameer, why did you choose UCSC and what's your advice? We don't have enough time to go into the, like the real, real story, but essentially me and my friend, um, who we were at community college together and we were talking about colleges that we wanted to go to and things like I'm from LA, you know, there's plenty of colleges in LA, but you know what? I want to get out of the city. I wanted to, you know, go to Northern California. Me and my friend, um, we looked at colleges, and then we here we see Santa Cruz right in between the beach and the forest, and it's like there's no better place. And I literally forgot that that was my dream college at the beginning of my community college career, all the way into the into the end, and essentially. I hate to say it like this, but it was kind of like my long shot, like, eh, you know, eh, well, I might as well just apply. And and I'm here. And that was just one of the beautiful things that that draw you 
and will keep you is just the serenity that you feel here. Um, you know, my, my advice to all first year students, and I know they encourage you, don't bring a car your first year. Just don't do it. I'm not even talking about the parking. That's a whole nother webinar right there. I'm just talking about take your time to enjoy the campus, hiking trails everywhere. Enjoy Santa Cruz. The bus system is awesome. Just really just enjoy where you are. This type of serenity and peace and beauty. You wake up and there's deer all over the place and turkeys and you know, and, and the squirrels are just playing outside of your window. It's, it's, it's an awesome place to just come in, just soak it up and enjoy. Find some weird table somewhere. You might still have internet access and do your homework. I love just finding new locations at least once a week. Beautiful. Uh, I love it. And I would agree. I think all of us love the, the natural beauty of this um, very unique campus. Amanda. Why did you choose UCSC? So an obvious reason is to play soccer here. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, it's also a competitive soccer team. And also I can um, push myself academic wise. And I thought that was pretty awesome. It was like the best of both word, worlds. And um, also, um, like he was saying, the, the, just the nature. You can't not go outside and go for a walk and be sad like you're you're just going to be happy just looking at how beautiful it is here but um I guess um my advice would just be to like not rush anything if you're not sure about like your major or whatever like don't rush anything I I originally was a proposed psychology and I already switched to anthropology it's it's, it's really easy so don't stress about anything you have time like that you have time. Carolyn, why Santa Cruz? So um, I actually toured Santa Cruz my freshman year of high school and just already loved it because how beautiful it was and just like I got a type of feeling, you know, that I didn't really get at other colleges. Um, but then when it came time to actually choose which school to go to, um, I was choosing between Santa Cruz and a different school that had a particular major program that I wanted to be in. Um, and I ended up choosing Santa Cruz because I felt like it would be a sort of reset for everything um, in my life in a way that would allow me to grow in a much more impactful way um, than the other schools that I was looking at. Um, and nothing has been, like nothing has gone as expected, honestly, in my time here, but it absolutely has allowed me to grow in that more impactful way. So I just, I was just thinking about that the other day that it was at, it has so far absolutely um, fulfilled the goal that I set into it with. Um, it's, you know, it's interdisciplinary, like, uh, like it was said earlier, there's not so much competition and not in a bad way, like just in a way that helps other people uplift each other. Um, as opposed to being like pretty cutthroat like other schools are. Um, and my advice would be to know that you're gonna be fine, like no matter what, like you really are just gonna be fine. And that in being at Santa Cruz, I feel like when you're doing well, like when you're happy, there's so many things like to be grateful for that kind of like keep that energy moving. And when you're not doing so well, just the community the, and the environment really helps you put everything in perspective and step back um, and brings, at least to me, a lot of clarity and a lot of calm um, to know that there are so many good things and resources on campus that I'm able to tap into no matter what's going on. So just you're, you're always going to be fine. Things are always going to work out one way or another. That's my advice. Beautiful. Love it. Sandrine, why did you choose Santa Cruz? Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, why did I choose Santa Cruz? Um, you know, I transferred here during the pandemic. I was depressed. Uh, a lot of things were going on with the Black community. And, you know, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to go for it. And uh, I applied to all the schools um, that I wanted to go to. I wanted to get away from San Diego. That was my number one thing. I said, I don't want to go. I don't want to be in L.A. or Riverside or anything like that. Like, I want to go up north. 
Um, so I got into the two schools that are up here up north, obviously here in another school I won't name. Um, and I chose not to go to the other school because I was like, I didn't want to be in a college town. It was, you know, and there were a lot of things, other factors regarding that. And also it was too expensive at the other school. Um, not that Santa Cruz is not expensive, but, uh, I also wanted to be somewhere peaceful with the trees and the animals. And, you know, we see a bunch of turkeys around here and squirrels, as someone mentioned. So I'm a nature girl myself. So I wanted to be in, you know, that kind of vibe. Um, and, you know, for me, again, a black student, small population, there are hard days uh, at school and in Santa Cruz in general. There are hard days. There are low days. Um, but you do find your community. Like I mentioned, our path, I found my community there. And that honestly is the reason why I'm still here and I'm checking on. Um, but, yeah, I, I just wanted to be somewhere where I can have, like, a peaceful energy and, um, you know, with the trees and everything like that. Um, but also advice. Um, please check your emails. Emails get sent to you every day. I know, especially for the high schoolers out there, you just got out. You didn't have emails to check. Those went to your parents. But please check those emails. There's info. Yes, that's for that. Because even for me, school, you know, we have to register for classes next quarter. I did not check my emails. And so I have to wait till Monday to add two more classes. So please check your emails uh, on Canvas and on the Gmail. Also, um, join different clubs. Get, you know, get active with the clubs on campus or anything that's going on. You know, um, it's, that's how you meet people. That's how you form a community besides talking to people in class. So please get involved with, you know, um, at clubs, you know, different events on campus. And also a big thing, use up the resources. We have pantries, like Irma mentioned. We have, you know, we have the ERC, the Ethnic Resource Center. We have the DRC, Disability Resource Center. We have so many sources here. You know, we have CARES, different things like that. You learn more about from different things. But we have so many resources here that are here to help you. So don't ever feel like I have nowhere to go. If you don't know where to go, literally stop someone on walking to class and they will tell you. People are very open here and they are willing to help you. Um, so, yeah, check your emails, join some clubs, get involved with events, and use up the resources. Love it. Love it. Irma. Take it away, close it out for us. Why do you choose? All right, I'm the last dinner? one. I'll keep it nice and short just because I'm sure people want to go to dinner and stuff. I'm sure. Um, so I chose UCSB because, because of what Sandrine just said, the resource says. There are so many resources here for undocu students to the point where I am graduating debt-free because of the resources. I took advantage of the resources. There's so much help here for undocumented students. So I chose that and also I wanted to get the heck away from the Inland Empire because it is hot down there <laughs> so I was like I'm out of here and like you said I don't want to go back uh, my dad's like so now that you're graduating like do I need to go take a U-Haul when you like for graduation I was like uh yeah I'm not moving back dad I I'm staying up here uh I'm gonna find a job up here <laughs> um so that's, that's why I chose UCSC is because of the resources and the help that they have for undocu students. Um, and uh, advice I would give is make Google Calendar your best friend. Make Google Calendar, make Google your best friend, make Google Docs your best friend, make Gmail your best friend and make like everything your best friend because your calendar is your lifeline at college. Uh, at least for me, it is. Uh, I wake up every morning and check on what's what's on the list for today. So that's my advice. Um, and I'll I'll leave it up to you guys. Awesome. Sully, Sully, though, he's got that hand up. Go for it. Yeah, I just wanted to say like one final little piece of advice is um, get excited. College is a fun, um, amazing experience. You're with like minded individuals who are motivated to learn um there yeah it's just a really cool awesome experience um wherever you choose to go UCSC specifically of course um but yeah just get excited it's gonna be a great four years Mary you got you got something you want to add no oh okay all right we're done y'all <laughs> so I just want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you I cannot tell all of the audience how much each of these individuals 
I think perfectly embodies who we are at UCSC, the type of character, the type of individual, the type of intellect who are, is drawn to this campus. And um, if you think you fit here and belong here, please apply. You know, it's the application filing period. It's this month. The application is due November 30th. Get it done. We have two more drop-in sessions that are happening on the 23rd and on the 30th. If you need help, if you have ongoing questions about that application, hit it up. It's there on the calendar. You can come join us, get those questions answered. Thank you again, all of you. Have a wonderful weekend and a very good night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And go Banana Slugs.